Australians are the English speaking world's biggest wine drinkers, consuming almost 30 liters annually. Hey, I'll drink to that. In today's episode, we are traveling to the beautiful country of Australia and exploring some of their famous regions. We invite you to watch along, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share with us what Australian wines you enjoy. Australia is a vast country. It's just a bit smaller than America. Did you know that? Wine is produced in every single Australian state and boasts 65 wine growing regions. The first vines, grapevines I should say, were brought to Australia in 1788 by the first fleet. They were the British ships, 11 in total, carrying British military from England, crew, and convicts to establish a penal colony, which became the first European civilization and settlement in Australia. Of course they needed wine. I mean, really. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to hear about what region the two of you traveled to in this episode. And Cindy, I'd like to know where you landed. Well, I landed in McLaren Vale, one of the top grape growing producing regions in the country. In fact, Here's a little fun fact. The most expensive bottle of Australian wine ever sold is from this area. It went for $168,000. Penfolds 2004 Kalimna Block 42 caps off in 2012. And that's not what is in my glass. Just <laughs> so you know, I'm not drinking an almost $200,000 bottle of wine. <laughs> I know. Too I bad. wish so. Too bad. Yeah. I, I wish. Know. Yeah. Grapes were first planted in the McLaren Vale um, in South Australia in 1838. And some vines are more than 100 years old and still producing. Today in the McLaren Vale, there are 88 cellar doors and most of them are small family run operations or boutique wineries. So it's definitely someplace I'd love to visit. The Mediterranean climate in McLaren Vale helps produce rich and powerful wine with incredible energy. And what I have is a very energetic wine right here. It's Two Hands Sexy Beast. And so cue the energy on that one. Um, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon from McLaren Vale. It's $30 and absolutely delicious. I have these soft fruit aromas that reminds me of black pepper and plum, a little bit of blackberry. Spoiler alert, I have been drinking this already. <laughs> the tannins are soft and, and just, it's such a good wine to accompany a drink to a friend's house when you can, or grab that pizza and just open it. It's just absolutely delicious. Allison, where are you? What region? So I'm over in central Victoria in Heathcote. Um, this is about 120 kilometers northwest of Melbourne. Um, it was a known area rich in gold mining history, and it developed wine production area in about the 1950s and then bigger expansion in the 1980s. And today Heathcote maintains its reputation as a source for some of Australia's best red wines. They've got rolling countryside of ancient reddish brown soils and mountain ranges that have cool air coming into the region. And they make some of Australia's most deeply hued and impressively layered Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon wines. Now Shiraz, uh, the most planted grape in Australia, known for its minty tasting notes, is the king of Heathcote. So um, here we go with our king of Heathcote. I have a Tyrell's Rufus Stone Shiraz 2016. Now Tyrell's, you know, we often think of Australia as the new world, but Tyrell's is more than 160 years old. Their family history starts in England in the early 1000s. And I thought this was kind of a funny little uh, factoid. Walter Tyrell arrived in England with William the Conqueror. I mean, we're going oh, way, wow. way back. And mm -hmm. They're so old that it allegedly, the son of William the Conqueror, King William Rufus II, was killed by an arrow shot by Sir Walter Tyrell in 1100 AD. He fled England to live in Normandy and eventually was pardoned by the new king, but that's the family's start. Um, a few generations later, a few, few generations later, um, in 1889, Edward Dan Tyrell started 
uh, his winery, Tyrell's, with his first vintage from 30 acres of Semillon Shiraz and Osserot. Um, I don't know if I said that correctly. It is a French word, but it, it was the prince of white wines at the time. Um, today, they're an award-winning family winery. They have 900 acres extending from their home in the Hunter Valley, where they're located, to the distinguished regions of Heathcote and other places. Um, this is a wine that's deep in color. It's got plum and mocha and licorice notes, florals and spice. It's medium to full body. And it's got this lovely texture, nice acidity, a good play between the two. It's got juicy fruit, but it's also very kind of taut and, and, and tight with sandy tannins, a little minerality. I mean, it's probably not what the stereotype of Shiraz is. This is a great example of what Shiraz is. So we have uh, McLaren Vale. I'm over in Victoria. Miss Christine, where did you fly off to? Well, before I tell you where I flew off to, I'm going to tell you a fun fact. How okay. does that sound? <laughs> I think tell, tell us. <laughs> tell, tell us, Christine. <laughs> Australia is the world's fourth largest exporter of wine, and over 60% of all of their production leaves the country for 111 international markets. So wow. I thought that was kind of a cool fun fact. That is. Yes. Where did I land? <laughs> I landed in Barossa Valley. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Big, bold, back in black, ACDC. I don't know. It just all kind of makes sense to me. Uh, Barossa Valley is located in South Australia, 60 kilometers or 37 miles for all of my beautiful Americans out there uh, from the city of Adelaide. It is one of the oldest and most prestigious wine regions in the country. The Barossa Valley wine region was founded by German settlers mm -hmm. and is home to some of the oldest grapevines in the world, ranging from 100 to 150 years in age. So Barossa Valley is known for its powerful Shirazes and Cabernet Sauvignons, but it's also known for its blends, specifically their GSM blends. What is a GSM blend? Grenache, Shiraz, because we're in Australia, and Mouvedre. So what did I do? I went for a blend. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I went to Barossa Valley Estate Winery. This is a GSM 2018 blend. I just told you what's in the blend. Write in the comments if you remember what those three were. That would be fun. Um, this winery was founded in 1985, so they're kind of a new kid on the block, but they only make red wine. Only make red wine. Oh, let's just guess. A Shiraz, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and the GSM blend. <laughs> so, uh, we need to do a pop quiz after this for everybody. I know, I like this little like fun fact thing. Yeah. Um, red berry nose, I like the plum that's coming through for sure. Velvety kind of violets, chocolate, and this eucalyptus is definitely coming through on mine. The tannins are a little bit crunchy, a little bit like mm -hmm. This is a bold wine, it's not for the faint of heart. So I would suggest maybe decanting it for a day actually, or laying it down in the cellar for maybe two to three years before enjoying it. I am enjoying it though. And it has been open for me for two days. So I had to have a taste beforehand, of course, of course. <laughs> so do you have a favorite Australian red wine? If so, we'd love to hear about it and share it with us in, your, in our comments, please. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our fun, fascinating, and educational episodes. Cheers. <laughs>